Today we're going to get into um, digital communications and amateur radio. Um, this is actually take three. Um, I've been having equipment issues. So let's see if we can do it this one. I'm going to try and keep this one under 10 minutes. Um, usually I try and keep them under five, three to five minutes, but um, really wanted to cover some of the basic principles and the digital communications that have come out um, into the more of the market recently with the APRS enabled um, handsets and mobiles. Um, but also going to cover the Yaesu Digital System Fusion. Uh, as we see in front of us, we have the new and improved Yaesu Mobile, the FTM 400DR. Now, a great radio. Um, there's quite a few good. Um, introductory videos on YouTube, so I'm not going to go into all the buttonology and um, all that, but I wanted to con cover some of the basic digital communication functionalities and the basics of that. Um, so, really, you know, what kind of draw has drawn me to the Yaesu product line, this was my first uh, amateur radio product, the Yaesu VX8G, and uh, you know, really enjoyed, have enjoyed having it with the integrated built-in GPS and TNC modem. And, you know, really kind of want to explain what is APRS and kind of how it works. Um, so without further ado, we'll uh, take this and we'll go have it go to the station list. And so, as you can see here, there, here's a list of stations out there that I've recently received. Um, had to reset my unit yesterday, so there's not too many right now. And you can see my field expedient antenna right there. And, you know, not ideal for um, collection per se. The uh, um, one of the nice features about you know. APRS is being able to get the station list and it allows you to quickly identify with you know not much time or energy um, identify all the stations that are around you and their status so like the weather unit here you know it's a little old um, but uh, You know, it'll allow you to see the uh, local weather at a given time. And, you know, it's interesting to see that, you know, over the last couple of days I've seen actually a fair amount of um, FTM 400s out there, but the, you know, the most prolific is the Kenwood product, you know. Um, Yesu is not, thankfully, not the only manufacturer that has integrated APRS into their product line, Kenwood being, um, yeah, I'm not sure who was first or not, but Kenwood has based, you know, been one of the forefronts at least in their product line. Um, but I am seeing the Yesu models coming out there. Um, there's people say that this new digital system fusion that you're going to buy it and be the only one that can communicate on it within the net and uh, yeah I, I disagree with that I think there's quite a few out there so you know really let's cover the basics of the APRS um, really APRS achieved an ad hoc network it basically allows you know every user to communicate with every user and it has a system protocol that enables multiple access of the channel um, you know, when the unit is transmitting its beacon, you know, it's the only one that's transmitting at the time, but there are system protocols in place for delaying um, transmission while you're receiving and, you know, the time delay that it will take to retransmit your beacon. So really, how does APRS work in the digital mode? So you start out with text and the text gets converted through the source encoder, through ASCII, and then it pushes it over to the audio uh, 
frequency shift keyer at 1200 bits per second into the channel encoder. You just push through the channel and then back out to the output. But really, APRS, you know, APRS is a probably the most advanced ad hoc network product out there, even on the commercial and uh, military communications. Um, it really has achieved an, uh, an enhanced or an extended ad hoc network. So what that means is, you know, you have you know me the signet here. You know, I I transmit out a beacon, and you know my my area of influence is pretty much you know let's say it's from I have a, you know defined area of influence or and uh, my beacon goes out and you know so my friend Dave is over here and uh, friend Drew is over here and the digipeter is over here. You know my beacon may only get to Dave, but what his unit does is it holds on to it for a brief moment in time, and if a digipeter receives it and rebroadcasts it, it'll listen to that. And if it doesn't see that, it'll actually rebroadcast it um, for me as well. So it'll rebroadcast the beacon one, and his area influence, you know, happens to be, you know, let's see, you know, his area influence will be this far out, and my beacon will get to Drew through Dave. And again, his unit will hold on to it and look for um, the digipeter to read broadcast it. And if it doesn't, it'll, it'll read broadcast it. And, you know, lo and behold, his, his area influence is from here. And because the digipeter's, you know, quite a bit in a better location, it, the digipeter is able to hear it. And, uh, the computer hears it, rebroadcasts it, and pushes it out to the greater community. You know, that is, in essence, a very robust and extended ad hoc network. You bring 20 users with an APRS enabled handset, and you can, you know, you have the collective geographic transmission of all the 20 instead of just the one or the between the two. You have the collective whole. Um, so that's kind of APRS in a nutshell. I really enjoy the APRS features. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, Kenwood and ICOM coming online. I know ICOM had had APRS functionality through the D-Star uh, D repeaters, um, but just recently they've entered actual handhelds that are able to push and pull APRS data. Um, there's also APRS messaging where you can do call sign to call sign messaging. You know, I could send a message to Drew and, you know, it, it could go through Dave and get to Drew um, and vice versa. You know, I, I enjoy the call sign to call sign message, messaging. Um, so let's, moving on from that, let's get into the Yaesu Digital System Fusion. Um, the there, there's quite a bit of misinformation or a lack of information of the basics of the digital system fusion, what it entails. Um, yeah, I, I really feel that they made some really nice advancements into the community. Um, you know, it's digital communication and the APRS or in the amateur world is, is nothing new. We've been doing, you know, frequency shift keying, phase shift keying um, for quite a while now and ICOM has had their D-Star but really you know integrating this um, you know mainstream um, production line of digital communications there there's some really nice aspects of it so let's get into the basics and kind of some really nice aspects that I uh, like and some misnomers about um, what it is so really the input can be audio and data and if it's audio it gets pushed over to the source encoder and to my best mo best knowledge it's the ambi plus two vocoder um don't you know if you if you can provide me the black and white of what it actually is if it's different i'd, I'd actually appreciate that um i've done some extensive searching uh pulled 
the unit apart to see if I could identify an ambi uh, or a vocoder chipset to identify what kind of vocoder it is. But that's the best I could come up with. But I don't really have any solid sources. Um, but it really doesn't matter uh, per se. It has a vocoder and it pushes it over to the channel encoder. And the channel encoder uses a four phase shift or a frequency shift key um, encoding. And what that means, you know, it's the same frequency shift key in here, but it's just four levels. So you start out with 1200 and the second level you get 24 and then 48 up to 9600 bits per second. And so you it pushes the bits over into the channel at 9800 bits per second and a channel width of 12.5 kilohertz. And the channel it uses is a TDMA channel. Um, it says TDMA, but I, I, I think this is more of a misinformation and a lack of better terms. Um, it's not a multiple access channel um, per se. Um, to me, a, a multiple access channel has system protocols that enable multiple access. And, you know, there's nothing to prevent the user from indefinitely keying the mic and um, basically jamming the channel and that doesn't allow other users to access. So it's really on the user to make it a multiple access channel. But it is using time division and putting the bits into the, and it really just uses a two time slots. So time slot one, uh, first time slot, second time slot, and then back into the first time slot and then the second time slot. And so the two channels would um, push through the data in the time division channel and then back out at the other end. Um, so what are some neat features about that? The main one being is the, you know, the, the channel width. So we see are specifically the two meter and 70 centimeter bands getting very congested with repeaters and users. And this allows us, you know, as, as we move forward into this digital age, we'll be able to shrink the, the channel footprint that we will need for the future, uh, allowing us to put more channels into the same spectrum. So, I, you know, the channel spectrum, 9600 bits per second, that's, I mean, it's not bad for that size of channel. There's better throughputs out there, but you're gonna probably occupy more of a channel when you do that. Um, so it's pretty good bit rate, but the real one thing that I'm really excited about this enabling us is um, really being able to push data and really, um, you know, in theory, I haven't done it yet. I'll, I'm looking forward to implementing it, but basically with the data cable and, you know, once I get the FT1DR, throw the, the handheld and a laptop in my backpack and have a mobile internet available to me. So when I, you know, go out with a team or, you know, in emergency management, you know, it really, really alleviates the overhead that is required for setting up an internet. And there are, you know, many, many uses, you know, just simply recreational use for sure. But in the emergency management uh, scenario, being able to set up an, a very large geographically, uh, very large geographic internet is quite advantageous. Um, so I'm excited to get into that. I, the picture I, I, I enjoy, you know, I'm, I'll probably get the, the camera enabled, um, mic, but this one doesn't have it. Um, anyway, just some thoughts and review of the features and the basics of the Yesu digital project product line. Uh, sorry for the length. Um, looks like I'll be pushing 15 minutes here, but I appreciate you tuning in and um, watching the video. Thanks.